All right. This should be good. I hope so. Okay. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to the first Learn About Eyes live stream from the OR. I plan on doing this quite a lot of times, maybe every week. I am in the OR practicing every Tuesday usually, uh, just to try new things, just to kind of get better, perfect some stuff. And yeah, so maybe I can take you guys with me. And one of the main reasons is because I want to get better at things and I want to get better at live streaming. And so this seems like a good opportunity to do that just so you guys can see um, what you're dealing with or what I'm looking at. I'm going to show you this. Can you guys see this? This is what I'm looking at. It's my Sony together with a monitor up here. And this is where it's streaming. And I guess I'll just find out afterwards whether it's actually working. Uh, just so you guys know, there is a live chat. Uh, I do see your chat messages. I, I can even display your chat messages. Uh, if I don't get any, I will just do my thing. If I don't get any questions, um, then I'll just be here practicing. I'll tape it. You can watch it later. If you do want to interact, if you do want to uh, give me some questions, if you want to give me some tips, um, then you can do that, of course, as well. I can see we've already got the first, uh, the first message from Flo. Hi. Uh, so I can display it, your questions like this if I want to and then answer them. I hope this helps. So I thought tonight I was going to, sorry, let me start over. So tomorrow I have uh, six FACOs and so tonight I wanted to do some phaco surgery. I haven't been operating for two weeks, so it's good to get the hands uh, ready again. And so I thought I'd show you what I do for practice. Maybe you can use some of it. Uh, maybe you can give some tips. Maybe uh, you can get some inspiration. So I haven't set too much up just yet. I'll just take the camera. Uh, and lead you to through what I do and show you what uh, what I have here and so first definitely to to show some capsulorexis praxis uh, I'm gonna use the Kitaro set this was bought by one of our uh, former professors Professor Goldblum maybe he will be watching this at some point and uh, this, it, this is what it looks like. Uh, I find it a pretty good set. I don't really know where you can buy it or what the price is. Uh, we have it here at the clinic and it's really awesome for dry lab stuff. So definitely recommend that. And then I do have my Philips Studio Eyes for the FACO part. If you want to see, I do have a FACO machine by Ertli here, OS4. I'll take you through the setup process later when we get to the actual FACO part. But first, let's do some capsulorexis. So I see some stuttering here. Uh, let me check if this is still okay for you guys.
what can I do here? All right, now, now we should have sound from the camera, which is probably pretty bad. And now we are back. Can you guys tell me whether uh, you can hear me right now? I switched it back. Thank you. Cool. So this is really annoying. That's, that's the new thing about, uh, <laughs> that's the thing about live streaming. So thank you for the comment, uh, Flo, especially. Um, and let's get going. Please do inform me if there's any problems at all. Now I tried, tried trying to get the microscope around the camera. That's pretty hard to do because it's so big. Ah. Let's put this like that. Okay. I think this should be fine. And then I'll s switch to the microscope view. Uh, this is what that Kitaro eye looks like uh, with the f with the foil just. Put all, uh, put over it. This is the Rexis foil that you're supposed to be using. All right. So, what I like to be, what I like to do is use a bent 27 gauge needle. Sometimes you do need to bend it because those are actually quite expensive. Okay. So, of course, you would have already done the incision here, and this is supposed to be the paracentesis, at least from what I understand. Let me just take. Ah, no, I think you can see it. It's it's okay like that. So, if you want to practice it like that, you can incise the capsule a little bit and then what I do is I use a forceps usually to get to the size that I want. You can practice your pivoting here. Maybe not perfectly round right now. There we go. getting a bit smaller here, so let's take it out and boom. Now these, these tiny things here, they do fly around quite a lot. Um, so what I like to do is I take a piece of, um, it's just, just a wet wipe that we use to disinfect things. And I just put them on there, so because I don't want them to be flying around the room. Definitely not. Definitely don't want them to be somewhere on the floor in an actual OR. So, what do we, what do we do now? We switch back to this view, and we're gonna change the foil again. Just put it. So you can see I've already used this the last time quite a bit, but then you, you can just use it for quite a lot of time with not a lot of um, foils, so that, that should be fine. So let's, let's get back to this view. Can you guys on the live stream see it okay?
Now with this foil, what you sometimes have is that it pulls a bit too much on this edge, so you sometimes need to pull it back a little bit. And then what it also does is it flips back because it's not, the anterior chamber is not filled with anything but uh, air, so that is sometimes a bit of a task to get it back, but I do like it as a task to practice flipping it around. So, I think we're good with the Rexis. One thing that I do want to kind of perfect, uh, we'll do for, by the way Flo, thanks for all your feedback. It's keeping me alive, that's good. Um, So one of the things I do want to practice for myself and I like to adapt at some point is not using this many tools, not using this needle, uh, just using as little as possible. Now let's go here, turn the light on. So what a lot of people do is they just use the forceps to actually grab or incise the capsule. This depends a little bit on how well your uh, Rexis forceps cuts. So this one cuts a lot, so you should probably be cutting it somehow, then grabbing, and then pulling a flap. But this also always, almost always leads to this kind of double flap thing, which can be a bit annoying, especially here. Because then you have to go back and grab that part again and then continue. But I mean it's cool not to have the time to actually use that needle. It's cool to just use one instrument, one thing less uh, that you need to throw away after. Okay, let's do one more like that and then go to the FACO part. If there's any tips and questions in the meantime, just tell me. Okay. Oh, by the way, a good tip that I found, I don't know, I hope you, can, you guys can see it here, is while I do the Rexes, um, I know a lot of people can just do it with one hand. Um, for beginners, one of, uh, one of my... Uh, so, sorry, I was kind of distracted by this question by Flo. Thanks, Flo, for participating. Um, uh, is this a special guitar foil that you have uh, to reorder, or do you use some other foil? Okay, so, now it's, sorry. <laughs> I, I can't really see you in the camera, and I don't want to move it too much. Um, so, the thing is, uh, yes, it is a special foil. I have just ordered three of them. Uh, in Swiss francs, it's about 140, so it's about the same, I guess, in dollars. Uh, by the way, Sufjan, if you're watching, one of them is for you. Um, and then they do look like this. Uh, they just come in, in a package like this and you can use them for quite a long time. They last you forever. I would say with one roll you could basically be for a couple of years. Put this away. All right, so what I was gonna say before that, I hope this answers your questions, Flo. Okay, so what I was gonna show you before that, I hope I can get in focus again. No, it's using a microscope. There we go. That's better. Um, nope. Doesn't like that.
I guess it's all right like that. Good. Okay, so what I was going to show you before. So for beginners, as a, as a good tip, instead of just using one hand to, do, to lead the forceps, I think it's pretty good because you're usually shaking a bit if you're just using one hand. To use both hands, then you can use your palms uh, or your uh, little fingers to uh, rest on the patient's forehead. And then you can just put your forceps in like this. And then you can rotate it this way with all your fingers. And if I show you both views, I hope it's visible like that. If you go in, this is usually very tight here. Okay, if you go in, you can do a real circle just by moving the forceps between your fingers and pivoting. That works actually really well. So let's go the other way around once, just to practice it. I mean, this is exactly the time to do unnatural things, things that don't feel good to you, need to be practiced. And you see I have trouble grabbing like this, and I'm twisting it, that, ch that can't be good. It's going out, so I'm pulling it back in. Oh, by the way, this is perfect to practice pulling it back in. Let's imagine it's going out. Ah, let's, let's, let's do a run out Rexes and recover that one just for a, a quick change. If you guys have any ideas of what I should be doing, then don't hesitate. Okay, so. Let's go in. And maybe create a flap like that. And then have that flap run out this way. Doesn't want to run out. Okay, so it's running out this way. Can you see? Hopefully it's... I hope it is sharp enough. So it's, it's kind of running out this way. So what you can actually do is pull back the other direction. So you can flap it back, grab it close, and then pull in the other direction. This doesn't work all that well with this because it's not at all elastic. But can you see? I zoom in. Uh, trying to focus on the monitor. We obviously don't have the same focus. And let me just adjust my accommodation just so I know that you always see the same things in focus as I do. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so can you see after I have pulled it back that the, the vector that was showing this way is now going, or the, the rip that was going this way to go out here is now going in again. So at this point, I can take it back and pull it back like normal. This is a bit too close for me. I have a really magnified version. Now it wants to kind of run out again. Grab it. Pull it a little bit back. And then you should go like that. Okay, I think we've got enough of the, uh, of the Rexis Praxis. 
Um, let's do some, some setup and then some FACO. So, let's hope that this cable doesn't fail me again. Okay. All right, so now I'm putting the guitar away. And I'm setting up my uh, other thing. It's this one. I don't, mean, <laughs> don't actually mean this to be a, a selling event or whatever, because I'm not paid or sponsored by any of these um, companies, but I just love uh, what they do. I love, what, uh, love their products. And the thing is, I've been searching for such a long time to find all these things that I would have loved to have something like that, uh, some video like this one or some stream where I could actually just look it up. Uh, that's why I'm showing you guys. So, the one that I have here from Philips Studio Eyes uh, is just a plastic head. It has a tube in case you get messy. And then a plate. Okay. So this is re this one's really good for if you're doing FACO, uh, because otherwise the whole uh, table gets wet. Their basic thing. Uh, because this, uh, this head is quite expensive, they have a basic head that is just a piece of plexiglass with a hole in it. Um, it works fine, but you create a crazy amount of water on the floor, so you kind of have to clean up afterwards, which sucks. Uh, so here you can just connect this and then put in the tube. go and then you put this into a bag or something there we go and then this right here it is actually this is the actual plate and then the the head goes over it they do provide you with a ball head but it, it's a really cheap, really, really cheap ball head. So what I did, I, I took a ball head, ball head from one of these Gorilla Pots that I wasn't using anymore or not too much. And, and just, I just put this on. So now this is much stronger and much more flexible than the other one and much easier to adjust. I just screw this on here. show you how we put this in here. Uh, we need one of these eye cups and an eye. So I think we're going to use a normal FACO eye for this one first. These are just eyes with a pretty hard cataract, but they're fun. They're kind of waxy. It, the, the feel of the lenses is not actually all that great. They do feel, they don't feel as real. Oh, by the way, I just found out for this type of eye, we don't need an eye cup. This is just for the bigger round eyes. Um, so they do have these if I even have them here. Ah. Yeah. So they do have these advanced eyes that are really round. They have a capsule and a vitreous that you can drop things in. And then you need this 
They even have some eyes with muscles that you can pull through these holes. Uh, but we're using the cheaper ones that are solid, so we're just putting them on here. Okay. I think we're almost set up here. And see, with the ball head, you can just adjust the patient's head, no problem. Okay, so let's, up, let's set up the machine. Oh, by the way, I do need to take a picture of that. It looks really cool. Let's do that. Okay. So next, we are hopefully not touching that, that cable again. And we are setting up the machine, the FACO machine. If you have any questions, uh, do ask. It has been calm in the, in the comment sections. I don't know uh, whether somebody's still watching. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just talking and showing you some stuff. All right, so this is the Earthly OS 4, OS 4, I think. What I've done so far is to plug it into the wall mount and to plug in the, um, the air supply into the wall. And then we need to figure out how to turn it on. And there is a flip switch on the back here, obviously. I do have to say I struggle with it uh, a little bit sometimes uh, to turn this on because I don't do it that often. Uh, but I recommend to everybody to actually do this. Uh, as a surgeon, you should know how that machine or your machine works. And you should definitely, uh, you should definitely know to, how to do the basic setup in case something goes wrong. Uh, once that you can actually, that you at least feel comfortable with the machine. Okay, so this is some, uh, this is probably some uh, ad for Earthly. Hello. Yeah, let's show that comment. Hello back to Poland and hello from Switzerland. <laughs> um, all right, so. Uh, Earthly was actually nice enough. They're a really great company. They are really nice in providing uh, things to practice and, and to work with. Uh, so they did provide these, these sets. Let me just take that trash closer here. And they did also provide me with a FACO tip that is only uh, for wet labs. I do still have the old FACO tip on there, so I should probably remove that. Okay, now. I don't know. All right, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's a, I don't know how to say your name, sorry. The Polish guy. <laughs> um, all right, so this is how you take apart the, or take off the old um, FACO tip. There is a little instrument that is delivered with it. Maybe you can see it here. Um, and then you take the old one off. Usually you're throwing them away after the operation. And then for the new one, you get this preloaded already and you put the FACO tip in here. Okay. Pull it off. Maybe retighten it just a bit more. Pull it off and then it should be good.
good like that and then to put all put on the sleeve yeah it's usually pretty good to make it a little bit wet so I'm taking a bit of saline putting it in there and then we can slide that faker tip on take care not to go out of the wrong out of the side holes this can be tricky okay should be fine like that okay so we did this we did this let's put that i don't know what the official name of that is but it looks like a condom kind of um then plug the faker tip in it's really easy blue goes to blue so that even doctors can actually know how to do it okay I'm gonna keep this because I'm going to drain the fluid into this and put this uh, over uh, and let the let all the fluid go in there I'm gonna need to put this into my usually you would be putting this into your BSS um, now I'm just buying like three four Swiss francs worth of uh, this is called the Ringer Lactat I don't know it's just a saline solution and it's really cheap you can get it at any pharmacy Probably turn it off. This goes in the back. Oops. And I honestly never actually know, never 100% sure where this, where what goes. But I'm pretty sure these go on the FACO. As you can see, it takes quite a lot to set up. That's why I'm not doing this every week because it's, it is quite a hassle to turn everything on, to set everything up and to put everything away in the end. So this is the FACO hand piece. You still see it. And it has two width. Uh, one of them goes in here. And the other one goes here. You can't actually do it wrong. I just show you this doesn't work and this doesn't work so this works this works so that should be fine so um Flo thanks for that question uh the actual the real FACO tips so you're not just this this one that I have uh, it says wet labs only, um, so you probably shouldn't use that <laughs> for a patient. Um, but the, the actual FACO tips, uh, they are reusable. Uh, they get sterilized um, after, after being used. All, all we, uh, so the FACO hand pieces, yes, the FACO tips, they're thrown away afterwards. Okay, so now this part always confuses me. I'm not completely sure. I'm hoping doing it right otherwise you have something to laugh so this actually goes in here I have connected the water uh, through here which I'm not completely sure if it's right but we usually find out soon enough push it in and then go pre-op 
No? Go reset, sorry. Maybe not. Ah, I have to choose FACO first. See, this is only what you learn uh, if you do this yourself at night alone without somebody showing you. I didn't push FACO, so it didn't go up, uh, and then it start. And maybe someday you have somebody new, or you're operating in the middle of the night, somebody doesn't know how it works. It's good if you do. Okay, so this is my program. Now, this bottle height is definitely way too high for, for these uh, plastic eyes. It's gonna get a really messy. Uh, and now we're doing the pre-op test. So what this is doing is just filling this chamber up with water. It's coming soon. There we go. And then sixty five per cent takes forever. Okay, now it's testing the FACO. Probably can't see much. Maybe you can hear it. All right, and we're good. So let me just figure something out to take that water away from sensitive things and from the floor. So, let me just turn, turn you this way. So, I'm just going to, I mean, do this. Maybe it works. So, I'm taking the tube and I'm just going to tape it here and just put it into this plastic cup. I need a tape. All right, I can't find any tape right now. I'll just get creative. Okay. Let's hope this actually works. If I do get wet feet, I'll tell you. <laughs> It'll be my fault. I'm gonna put you over here carefully, not to disturb my fragile cable. This actually is a good view, maybe like this it is. Yeah, could be good. Okay, 
So, what do we need? Let's go through it uh, in our head. What we need, we need paracentesis. Got that one. Um, we need our main incision. We need some visco for the capsorexis. Uh, I got that sponsored by somebody. What is that? Ixium. I don't even know. Those were. So those are expired. So somebody just gave them to me. A good trick. Um, you can buy. You can buy these actually at the pharmacy pretty cheaply, and just pull this up into a syringe. It works just as well. Like this. We're going to need our forceps. And I'm using actually a spatula. Sorry, it's too thin for that. So I'm actually just using a spatula because this is the only thing that's on our set. And this is what my uh, boss is using. So I'm kind of trying to just use what he uses. But it does make cracking a whole lot di more difficult. Or I think that is it. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I don't know. OK. So let's get this closer. Put the FACO power up a bit. And then. Just trying to figure out which way to it is nice and crisp for you guys. Maybe if I close that a bit a little bit. Yeah. I guess that's pretty good. Uh, um sorry. I missed a couple of uh, questions from Flo, uh, so about that. So the first one was, or the last one was the, the cassette of the FACO machine you just inserted, probably a single use. Yes, it is. Or at least here it is. So in India, we were reusing these uh, again and again, but it definitely is single use. Here, uh, let's take this one out. And then this other questions. Uh, are the lines in FACO tips single use or can you reuse them after using Philips eyes? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so the cassette and the FACO tip and everything, you can reuse those uh, every time you practice, but definitely not on a patient. Um, but here, it, it's not a problem. You can use them. I have used materials here uh, in my box anyway, so um, you can use them. No problem. Okay, let's try. I'm gonna try and put this over here a bit so it doesn't, so I don't get in, t in the way too much. So maybe a bit more like this, and maybe we can pull this back into view a little bit at least. Okay, so now oh, this is annoying if it's not in the middle. New challenges of a live stream. Okay. Good. So, by the way, I would usually recommend using uh, using gloves so it feels uh, so it feels as realistic as possible. Just don't don't use the expensive sterile gloves. 
just use some normal gloves. But since I'm going to be using the uh, so since I'm going to be using the touch screen a lot, I think I'm not going to use gloves today. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> no flow. You're not interrupting. Uh, you're keeping the the story alive. Thank you for that. Anyone else? I don't even know who's watching or if somebody's watching, um, but if you do have anything to contribute, to interact, uh, you're absolutely welcome to do so. Uh, even afterwards, you can write in the comments and I'll answer, that's no problem. Um, but if you want me to try something, if you want me to test something, that's not a problem. Uh, all right, so let's go to the microscope. Uh, this is a, what is this, a 20 gauge uh, paracentesis. Uh, now this is of course filled with air, so it's going to be a bit weird, but well, it doesn't matter that much. So I'm going to do the paracentesis here. Okay. And then what, what's also weird is that it's not bleeding, so it can be hard to find them again. Okay. And then one here, try not to hit the capsule. Okay. And then using the knife to construct our tunnel. This knife is definitely, has definitely been used quite a lot. <laughs> Not that sharp anymore. Thank you, George, <laughs> for that comment. So if I'm if I'm missing any comments right now, uh, it's because I'm looking through the microscope. But I will be looking over uh, from time to time. So I'm just filling the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Maybe zoom in a bit, not too much. Then try and find my paracentesis again, which is, as I mentioned, a task. I'm going to use my technique with the incision here. I hope it is in focus enough so you can see something. All right, and then. This one is a bit sticky here now, but that doesn't matter too much. I think we can get it to rip. So it doesn't want to rip this way. I just do it the other way. Try to keep it from going out. This capsule is pretty hard to see. I think they would want you to stain it. Um, but I don't have, I don't have tripan blue here, so I can't. So, nice big rexus, always helps. Let's get this out. And these are quite hard to get out. Now, of course, these incisions are pretty sticky because they're silicone. Get most of it out at least. Okay. Now, I've got some, this is some, just some uh, saline that I have. And in a syringe, we're going to use that to do our uh, hydrodissection. Now these eyes don't really do hydrodissection well, um, but I kind of just act as if you do need to, it's so hard you do need to go underneath it quite a lot and it still doesn't really do 
too much and of course you can't see the wave or anything but I just try and rotate them afterwards what you shouldn't do is what I just did go too much into that wax just need to kind of lift it up there we go push it a bit and now it rotates as the guy from Cadar Coach Udai always says if you can't if you can't spin you can't win I don't know <laughs> just quickly answer that question to Flo um, yes this is what I do I do two, uh, two paracentesis one um, incision in this uh, order and then I do the visco I do not I, I don't like doing my incisions when, uh, when while having uh, visco into in the anterior chamber but because they tend to get too short because it's bulged up and you're just kind of 90 degree into that um, and I've just gotten used to that technique so uh, no I do it exactly that, as I showed it before yeah okay so um, now it should be time for FACO oops Let's use this second instrument. It's pretty dirty, you can see. Now with this, uh, you want the two holes to be on the sides, so depending on how you're gonna hold your FACO tip, uh, if you're gonna hold it like this, it should be uh, left and right now. If you're gonna hold it like this, which, I'm go which is what I'm gonna do, it should be here, left and right. So. This is not correct. Like this should be fine. Now, uh, sorry, got to adjust my foot pedal. Okay. Now, oh, this is the wrong part. This one is, I think you can see, right? Okay, so to get into the eye, I usually use the spatula uh, and to protect the decimase uh, and slide in with the FACO tip and underneath. Um, and I don't go in like this with the sharp edge, but try and protect the endothelium and the decimase like that. Now you can see as this uh, if I turn the FACO tip, it twists. Um, this would not be happening in a real eye. That's just because of the silicone. And then, of course, uh, once you're in, you do want to uh, turn on that, that uh, irrigation. Okay, so now you can probably see another issue here. We do have some air bubbles, and they do ha happen quite a lot. Let me just put this over my shoulders here. Usually don't operate from this side. We usually get our things from the left side. Okay, so th these never, they almost never go away. They're very hard to, to suck away. Good thing is you can't destroy the cornea here. So I'm just trying to get the caught up here in this visco that I put in before. But usually you get a lot of new ones very soon. So let's start with the first groove. Um, if this sound from the FACO machine is too loud or too annoying, just let me know. I'll just turn on the microphone for a while. Um, so I'll get to that uh, in a second. And now, what I definitely want to show you guys, or show myself, because it's the thing that everybody always 
uh, does wrong, including me, is you kind of think that the middle of the lens is here, or you end up with the deepest part here, but it's supposed to be here. So you really want to go in steep. You want to hold your fingertip very steep and go grab that part of the lens. Usually you would have your second instrument in there and you would find your paracentesis. Just keep it down here. All right. So now I've gone through. Now this, of course, you wouldn't go this far through uh, with a real eye, but these are so waxy that you're not able to split them otherwise. Um, maybe this is not even enough of a groove, but I'll just try. Go, go in. I, I usually just adjust a bit, like this. That's too much and then go in deep and then do your cracking. See, it doesn't work here. Still not enough. Of course, you should never go this far out in a real eye. Now we're gonna rotate it a bit more to this side. Should be fine. Maybe we can crack it now. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now we, we've got like two halves now. Um, oof. Also, um, it helps to play around with the settings and these kind of things because uh, it's usually, let me just turn it off. Um, uh, those eyes are not real eyes, so just play with your settings. See what, what each setting does to the eye um, and then what, what works best for these kind of eyes. So. And let me just show uh, the question from Ah, ILM. Hi, is it worth purchasing a wet lab kit as the one here? Due to COVID measures, the number of surgeries have been reduced a lot. Will uh, practicing is on such a kit add to surgical experience? Um, and that is definitely a yes. So I think it's apart from being a fun thing to do at night, um, it's a really good practice. It's it's probably not uh, all that close to, to, let me just get out the eye. Um, it's probably not all that close to a real uh, experience. It's very artificial uh, here, but just using your hands and trying out things without being worried of destroying or uh, injuring anyone, uh, destroying anything, injuring anyone. Um, it's really relaxing. And I usually just put on my headphones and listen to some classical music while I do this and it's just super relaxing and it does get your um, your experience up quite quite well so thank you for this comment um, all right so let's let's go back to the microscope view and then this is Gotten really sticky. All right, so again, I'm using the spatula to go in, turning, and then now we do have these. We do have these two halves uh, that we're gonna try and get, and again, bubbles everywhere, and again, this is annoying me. It's coming straight from here. Okay, so let's try and suck them up here. I do have two FACO programs. Some of them, some people have like three or four. Um, one for grooving, one for cutting up. So 
just so you know, this is definitely not how you would usually do it. Uh, well, if it's that easy, yes, you would maybe do it like that. Um, but usually you would try and get four quadrants, not two halves. But if, it, if it's working, then you can do it this way. Yeah. There we go. And then, this is already it. Let's clean these bubbles out. Nah, they're just going to stay in there forever, I guess. Okay, and then that fecal part is done. Unfortunately, with these eyes, you don't really get any cortex that you can um, take out, but you can I mean, you can still you can still practice that. So, to take the take out the cortex, we use a bimanual irrigation aspiration system, and you just take these things off. Tension. It's usually getting wet after this and then just put it onto the part that actually fits. There we go. Now this one is going to spill. And now we have these two. Put that fake tip somewhere safe. and then just go into the eye like that. Now with Ertley it's easy. Um, green is always um, irrigation, so coming out here, and white is aspiration. This can be different for different firms. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, and how you can tell, usually uh, irrigation has two holes on the sides while the aspiration only has one hole on the top, this part. I hope you can see that. Okay, so you would usually turn it on, go in, go in here, if you can find it. And it is super sticky here. <laughs> I have this problem all the time with these eyes. It kind of sealed pretty well. There we go. Now I have and silicone. This the silicone kind of uh, makes the makes the water pearl on it. So you can just practice using using your IA probe, trying to keep the irrigation deeper than the aspiration and just kind of take the cortex out. Try only to aspirate while you have something, switch, and then that's it. And then you would be implanting something into here, probably. Now I don't have, um, I don't really have uh, normal implants here right now. But I'm working on an idea on how to practice uh, YAG capsulotomy uh, for people without hitting the lens, without creating pits uh, for the residents. So uh, as like the last part of this live stream, um, I'd like to think of an idea of how to implant a lens with a posterior capsule pacification that you can laser afterwards. So if you have any ideas, uh, you can totally participate. Maybe my residents will be happy about it afterwards and you can help them get better at laser. Um, Federico from Custom Surgical, if you hear that, uh, if you do manage to get me that YAG uh, setup, I will film it, of course. Uh, otherwise, I'll just film it before and afterwards. 
And yeah, let's let's see what we can create. Let's see what we can do creatives. So I've got an uh, MA60 here, which uh, was graciously offered by Alcon. And this is what it looks like. So I thought I could kind of tape or, I don't know, glue something to it and then put it into the eye. Oh, if there's, if somebody's still here in the chat. Do you have an idea what we could glue onto this lens? Maybe the Rexus, maybe the, that red foil from the Rexus. Now here's the next problem. I don't have any glue. Didn't think about that. Um, so maybe I can just punch this with the haptics. Put the haptics through this. Let's see if that works. And then create a posterior capsule and pacification like that. Um, so this is actually what I usually do on these nights. I try to be creative and figure out some things that I can just do um, that are fun, uh, more than just doing the usual things. Okay, so let's switch to the microscope view. Let's see if I can actually do that. Okay, we don't need this. Maybe let's, let's get a surface to work on. find anything to work on. So we're going to be working on this then. Um, Flo, you're still here. Cool. Um, yeah, the MA60 is a three piece, yeah. Oh, this is too close. I'll show it under the microscope. That might be better. Oh, I lost it. That's why. Oops. Must be somewhere here. Pays to have good eyes. Okay. All right. These instruments they do get they do get really dirty when you use visco so you need to sometimes clean it because it gets hard and then sticky super sticky Maybe with some scissors. All right, now just I, I just had an idea. This 
So it's going to go into the eye, not this way. This is an S. It's supposed to be an anti S. Anti S always confuses me, so I always think 7 or Z, Z, whatever you want to call it. So it's a 7. Um, okay, so this is the way it's going to go in. Uh, we want to do a posterior problem, create a posterior problem, so we're going to put it on here. And what I just thought about is we could use oh, use a bit of visco to glue it onto there. And first I'm going to let's, this is as far as I get. First I'm going to cut out a piece of that foil. Oh, maybe you can even rip it. That's a nice challenge. size or less. Go with the flow. Okay. Let's rip this way and rip it this way. Do another one. But that could actually work. Let's do some something like it. without trying without getting in here that didn't even work no I don't think that works okay new plan cut it out this way so everybody who just tuned in we're trying to uh, create a I'm trying to create an eye that you can use to practice your uh, YAG yeah, capsulotomy. Um, so I'm trying to find a way to stick this thin, thin foil to this three piece lens and then implant it into this eye. So that one of my residents can practice with it. Okay. So new idea. Maybe grab grab it a bit like this. And just cut around it. If anybody has any ideas, you're more than welcome to share. how this works. Probably not going to be very round. It's 
going to be terrible. Tear the rest. No. Cut the rest. Okay. Okay. Yes, cool. Exactly, that was my plan too. Sorry, my girlfriend. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's actually my plan right now too. Good, good flow, thanks. Um, let's try and see if that actually works. Oh, this is really sticky. That's good. How can I get these haptics into here? You're probably right, Flo, to puncture it. Okay, maybe here. That's something you should be doing with your hands. Should have two. Ooh. Just hurt the lens. Um, do I have two forceps somewhere? Closer. Again, this is the way it's supposed to be in, so we need this side to be on top. This, so it needs to be like this. Oh, I can't really see. Is my hole too small here? That doesn't really work. I should have created a bigger punch. See, that's how you learn. Um, let me just get a 27, 20, I think I have a 27 gauge somewhere. on there. It's sticky. All right. Don't want to make the hole too big. Okay, that should be fine.
Uh, seem to go through, and now it needs to go through this part for it to work. Let's see how much we can get in here. I don't know why I'm shaking right now, but it's usually, if you try something new, your hands start to shake. There we go. That's why we practice this on stupid things like this, it doesn't matter. pretty good okay so thanks Flo for this um, now we're just gonna put a little bit of visco underneath I think so it sticks a bit better to the lens afterwards This works. Otherwise, not too bad. Okay. Now, we kind of have to fold this so without hurting it uh, to insert it into here. So, for that, first just to make it easier, I'm going to uh, get a big, create a bigger incision. Now this is, I've been using this knife for months, so it's not really cutting all that well anymore. Let's see how this works. Really curious to see whether that works. I'll let you guys know. Now, how should I fold it here? Probably. It's not that easy without breaking it. See if this works. By the way, thank you so much, Flo, for all your participation. You really kept kept this first live stream alive. Cool. Appreciate it. I hope you can use some of it. Now I 
don't want this to turn this way. I want it to turn this way. Probably shouldn't use a forceps to, to gap that incision. I hate this about those eyes. Never, I can never find my, <laughs> never find my paracentesis. Where was it? Now, there we go. Okay. So it's in the right way. I want to put this into the capsule. There we go. Rotate. Now, rotation is not that easy with the spatula. But if it's all you have, I guess you gotta deal with it. Got it in the sulcus. Not what I want it. There we go. Or should I? Should I put it in the sulcus maybe? That might be a good idea. Try to lift it out a bit. And lift the other side out just like that or maybe put this in first Lifting out the lens, but not that capsule that we built for it. That's not good. Go behind. Now these eyes don't really have a sulcus, so it's kind of difficult to put something in there. I'm curious if that's actually even possible. No.
But I mean, it's the cool thing about those practice eyes and these practice sessions. You can do whatever. Nothing happens. The only thing you get is experience with your instruments. Let's take this out. All the way out. There we go. Now, try to put this. Definitely not the perfect instrument for that. Let's see if this helps. Got a Sinsky hook. Probably a better choice. Much better. Again, it's hard to get back out. Okay. Oh, that made a huge difference using the Sinsky instead of the spatula. I guess there is a right and a wrong tool for that. Okay. I guess that's pretty good. Sucks, I've just got those bubbles that are in the way. I gotta deal with it. Just trying to get this back from behind. So it's nice. Well covered. Maybe I can use a little forceps to pull. Hope I don't tear it. Nah, that wasn't a good idea. I just had a great idea. I'm just going to fill it with viscoelastic from behind. That might help. Keep this sucker from coming back. And now fill it again from the front. Oops, empty. All right, so as a last thing, that's the thing that I showed you. Use these, use a big cannula. Use one of these cheap. Things right here. And just, oh no, you can't use that one, can you? Yes, you can.
That's a cheap way to get Visco. Okay, let's finish this up here and then I think a two hour live stream is more than enough for the first time. Okay, I think that should be all right. I'll test it and then I'll tell you if that worked. You can see that on Instagram, I guess. I'm gonna try that in the next couple of days. Um, see whether that works or not. Okay, so thanks to everybody who was sticking around. Special thanks to Flo, uh, who really kept the stream alive with his questions. Uh, I'm gonna do more crazy things like this, like creating a, an eye to practice a yak, yak capsulotomy. Um, in the next few streams, uh, I do have a presser flow technique plant that I'm, uh, that I'm trying to practice uh, that will be definitely next week and then we'll go from there and I think I have a pretty good setup here it's been all on battery two hours my Sony is almost empty um, but the YOLO box still has 50% that's pretty cool thanks to everybody and have a good night and let me just take one last picture Uh, just to be, to document it. Okay. All right, you guys. Thank you.